watch Hello Okanagan from Vernon. Hey guys, if you like these shirts, make sure you click the link below and every shirt is going to plant a tree. David, the day has finally arrived. Well, Peter, are you nervous? I'm a little nervous. Uh, about a month and a half ago, we put out a post on social media, and thanks to you guys, you let us know who those gentlemen are that fly information over the Okanagan. So, I think I've got the need for speed. Welcome guys to Hello Okanagan. We're almost at episode 20. This is episode 19, David. Can you believe that? Uh, I absolutely can. It's been an amazing ride and I, uh, I've, I've enjoyed every second of it and having you guys along for it also. So we're here at an airport because about a month and a half ago, we put on a post on Facebook and Instagram asking who these guys were. I just happened to catch them on video, about five or six of them flying in formation and then it blew up on social media. Everybody from Penticton to Salmon Arm and all points in between were saying, I've seen them as well, who are they, who are they? And then finally about four days later, somebody wrote me and gave me this gentleman's name so I can contact him. John, how you doing my friend? I'm doing very well, glad to see you here. So before we get into the snowflakes and everything like that, I wanna get a little bit of your history. What's, uh, what's your background? Background was uh, 25 years in the military and then six years with Transport Canada and 15 years corporate aviation down east. And are you from the Okanagan originally? No, I'm an Alberta, fair-haired, blue-eyed Alberta boy. Oh, Flatlands. Flatlands, Pretty close. that's right. <laughs> cool. Very yeah. cool. And now talk to us a little bit about the snowflakes, who they are, how they came to be, and what, where you guys got the name. Well, the snowflakes uh, started here before I got here. I got here in about 04, 05, and there, there was two or three people were actually doing some formation flying in the same type of airplane that we'll be going flying in, the Vans RVs. We're flying today? Yeah, we're flying today. I'm joking. I've been waiting for this for a month and a half. <laughs> and, uh, but as I got here, and we, I, because of my background, I started, uh, they let me join them. And it, like Flopsy, or Topsy, it has just grown. We've, we've gone from three or four, we're now fielding as many as 11 airplanes. Not all at once, of course. But and how often do you guys fly to get together? Well, up until COVID, we were flying uh, almost uh, four times a week. Wow. Now, it weren't very far. Salmon Arm for coffee, <laughs> Penticton for coffee, <laughs> Kamloops for coffee, and Kelowna for coffee. A lot it, of coffee. Yeah. Uh, but each of those uh, trips, that was a, a reason we'd do a formation takeoff and do a little formation training on the way up. So uh, during the week, we'd probably get three hours of three to four hours of formation training. That's incredible. And besides coffee, there's other little well, reasons course. to go somewhere like today, I think. Yes, we got to go somewhere today. For instance, Kelowna Flying Club is having their fly-in breakfast, but we've then gone to 100 Mile House and wow. had breakfast up there, had lunch up there. <laughs> so um, the uh, some people could ask how, or would ask, how can we afford to do this? Most of us are dipping into our children's inheritance. <laughs> so. Wait up, is that a joke? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what though? You gotta, you'd rather keep, leave them the memories and everything like that. It, it, uh, I mean, these are two seaters, right? So two -seater. you, can all, you can often take people with you and Correct, yeah. have them along for the ride, which is, which is amazing. The experience yeah. is uh, much more invaluable, yeah. I would imagine. What are your favorite places to visit or how far have you really gone? Well, uh, it took me nine years to build my airplane, but when I finished it in uh, 2015, about four months after, I took it down to New Brunswick and back. Wow. So the, the normal trip for, for most people is uh, within an hour, hour 15, maybe go to the coast, go out to BC, but with the COVID that has really put a, a damper on that. We're not using the airplanes as much as we did because uh, for obvious reasons. Yeah. Okay, well, let's go meet some of your other All uh, right. snowflake friends. Let's do that. Okay. We're here with another one of the snowflakes, Chuck and his beautiful 
plane right behind us here in the front of the Vernon Flying Club. How are you doing today, Chuck? Very good, thank you. Wonderful. And this is your plane that you built yourself? My wife and I built it. Your wife and you built it. There's about 13,000 rivets there and she bucked most of them. That's amazing. And how, how long did it roughly take you to build this? Seven years. Seven years. That's how long it takes my wife and I to put together an Ikea furniture. So that actually bonds us even more when we go through that. It must have done the same thing for you. Yeah, spending a lot of time with the wife <laughs> trying to finish something. <laughs> so is this the actual plane that our uh, cameraman's gonna be in, our director? Yes. Okay, and what type of plane exactly is this it? Is what kind of engine does it have? Vans Aircraft RV4, and it's got a Lycoming 0320. 160 horsepower. So where was your favorite place to fly so far where uh, you've been with the snowflakes? Like whereabouts in the Okanagan do you love going? I would say the Monashies in amongst the mountains there. And what time of the year is the best to see that? Early summer. Nice. And there's still lots of snow. In winter time so everything is white but in, when you've got just the peaks of white it's gorgeous. And, and what's, what's your background with Bush flying pilot. and everything? Bush pilot? Yeah. Your whole life? How long? Until I retired about 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Semi-retired. And where was that? Yellowknife. Yellowknife? Out of Yellowknife. So that's where you're from originally or you just lived there? That's, that's where I lived my part. adult life, yeah. Nice. And when did you move down here to the Okanagan? 30 years ago. Wow. <laughs> There's everybody that I pretty much meet are either from here or recently moved here. But knowing someone now that's been here for oh, a long time. It's a gorgeous place to live. It is. And obviously it's a great place to fly. Yes. So Chuck, why don't you tell us a little bit about how long you've actually been flying for? Well, if you count time in the air, a little less than two years. If you count since I did the first flight, it would be about 54 years. So you ready to take us up? Yes, certainly okay. looking forward to it. Awesome. Let's do Thank it. You. Thank you, Chuck. Hello, Okanagan. We're here in one of the hangars and we have another pilot that we wanted to interview before we go up there. This is Stuart. Stuart, how are you doing, my friend? Very well, thank you. Stuart, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about your background, where you come from, and what your experience is? Well, I'm a retired WestJet pilot and uh, retired here in 2012. I decided I needed to keep flying, so I got involved with these guys in the Snowflake group. And when was that? When did you move out here? Right in uh, 2012 is when I retired. Cool. And how yeah. did you hear about the snowflakes? Uh, just hanging out at the airport. I knew, <laughs> knew some of the people and uh, they invited me to join in with them. So that was, I was happy to do that. Cool. Yeah. And, and how long were you with WestJet? I was there with 17 to 18 years, 17 and a half years. Right from day one, from right? From day one, I did one of the first flights. Wow. On February 29th, 1996. 1996, two yeah. years before I was born, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, want, I have one important question since you're a commercial pilot. You must have been asked this before. Have you ever seen a UFO? I can say that I've seen some strange things. That's a whole nother show, right? Yeah, that's a whole nother show. Okay, thank you, my friend. All right. Let's get up there. All right, let's go. Hey guys, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And make sure you smash that like button and leave some comments. We love to hear from you about future episodes.
Jack Six for the East for new final. Two three, full stop. Do you know any, can we do any tricks? Pardon me? Can we do any tricks, like a barrel roll? Nine is breaking off, I'm going to Swan Lake, I'll come back in about five or ten minutes. That was awesome. How do you feel? Great, that was really cool. I'll do a stall turn and then go back. Okay. All right, hello, Okanagan. We're here with another phenomenal guest. Uh, I'm not gonna butcher it like everybody else does. This is <laughs> Sylvain, and uh, he's with Aurora Flight Academy. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, what you do, and yeah, your background. Yeah, Aurora Aviation Academy is part of a group of uh, the, the Aurora Aviation Group. So we've got charter helicopters, uh, we've got a uh, commercial aviation uh, inspection and maintenance organization, and uh, a flight school, fixed wing flight school. So we've been, uh, uh, here at the Vernon Airport uh, for uh, doing the Flight Academy here for over a year and uh, it's been a great year. We've got uh, just purchased a fourth aircraft, uh, uh, single engine aircraft to come in from Ontario and we've got the twin engine here, the twin Comanche for our multi-engine training. So it's been uh, a great first year of operation here out of Vernon. And what are some of the uh, age groups of the people that come in and want to learn how to fly? It's all over the map actually, you know, you've got, uh, we've got uh, Kensington Houston, who's uh, just turned 16. She's uh, one of the young youngest. She signed her license off on her 16th birthday, which is the youngest you can be. Wow. So she's gotten a little bit of press here lately. Was she the uh, one that got her flight license before she actually had her driving yeah, license? Yeah, the day she signed off on her license and took a friend up, she went to the driver's office to get her learner's <laughs> license. So she can fly her friends around before she can drive a car. Nice. Uh, just outside here we've got uh, Mackenzie as well, she's 18. So those are our youngest pilots, we've got a few people in their teens. And then uh, our oldest uh, customer is uh, 67, so um, really it's the full gamut. People wanting their uh, private, their recreational, their commercial license. So uh, it's um, everyone who wants to do it uh, from a living, for a living or uh, to bucket list. Cool. And uh, the biggest question I have for you now is, do they ever ask if they can play music on board? Yeah, they can. So oh, a, lot of headset, a lot of headsets got Bluetooth and they can uh, do that during a flight lesson. It's not conducive to a productive flight lesson, but when you're bombing around on a cross country, uh, you can uh, have some tunes going. There is uh, old navigation equipment in these aircraft that let you listen into AM frequencies as well. So nice. a couple of different ways to listen to some tunes. Cool, well, thank you, my friend. Thank you, thanks for stopping by. Start. I don't know what's going on. David, what do we do? Does anyone know of a good mechanic around here? Yeah, a mechanic. You've come to the right place. I'm a mechanic. Hey, buddy. How's it going? I'm Peter. Good. Ryan. Nice to meet you, man. This is David. David. Pleasure. Hey, David. So you're a mechanic out here at the airport? Yeah, I'm a been a mechanic here for about since 2013, running my own business, Okanagan Fixed Wings Limited. And yeah, we do lots of general aviation. We've got airplanes sitting around all over the place. Uh, it's Sunday with a nice day, everyone wants to fly, and we got a lot of broken airplanes. <laughs> so where are you from originally? Originally up north, you know, Anaheim, Nimpo Lake, and then when uh, I started my career in 2001 here in the Okanagan, and I've been here ever since. So I've worked with Cal Tire, Carson Air, Southern Interior Flight Center. Uh, the trailer's loaded up, we're gonna go down next week, actually tomorrow, I guess now, it's already, and work on a Medivac Citation Jet for the next month and a half. So, some pretty intensive maintenance going on. So, were you always? Did you always have your business? Did you just? Uh, did you just start that out recently, or? No, I was always an employee until, like I say, 2013. And then I rented this hangar from the city behind me just to store tools and things. And then I started pushing the odd airplane here and there in it, and it's just taken off wonderfully, positive. Cool. And the other thing as well now is you were talking about the different types of planes that you work on. Is it a whole gamma, like from tiny little guys to? Their jets and such? Right, yeah. 
my bread and butter is the the not Learjet, Citation Jets. They're very similar. You okay. know, it's like Toyota, Honda. Like how kind many of thing. people would fit in there? Maybe nine. The wow. corporate corporate aviation, right? Okay. And then lots of turbo props, lots of like King Air 350s, lots of uh, Malibu Piper Malibus, things like that. Private jets, lots of them. In fact, I think I work on most of them in the Okanagan. Uh, I rent hangar space out of Kelowna, the FBO. Uh, there's a lot of infrastructure involved with that stuff, so I don't do it here in Vernon, usually. Mm -hmm. Right, and then in Vernon, you know, I've got a couple of hangars when we push general aviation in constantly. Two weeks ago, I got my approved maintenance organization approved. That was a big deal. It was about three years in the making. Yeah. We transport Canada and all that, so yeah. now we can do uh, commercial aircraft and specialized maintenance. Nice. Yeah. And you were just mentioning off camera here that you also have a plane that you rent? Yeah, it's not quite serviceable yet. It's behind us, it's an Urcoop, and uh, it was kind of a donated aircraft, you know, that I've been fixing up over the last two or three years. And it's also an incentive for the employees that work for me, our pilots, and they want to go flying and like, here we go boys, let's have some fun with this. And also to generate some aviation interest, uh, get a lot, I'm looking for young people to come in and get going with it. So we're looking forward to that. Awesome. And have you ever worked with the snow, any of the snowflakes? I know all of them. Yeah. Most of their aircraft are what's called owner main maintenance. So a lot of those guys are old boys with lots of time and they work on them themselves. But I'm always here to help a hand, hand uh, lend a helping hand, balance propellers, sell parts, oils, all that type of stuff too. We, we keep those guys supported as well. And these guys built their planes like from scratch. Yep, they're a kit plane. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. They're they're really good, well-built airplanes. There's more of those RV vans flying in the world yeah. than any other kit plane combined. Wow. They're very proven. Sweet. Sweet, my friend. Thank you so much, thank man. You so much yeah, thank you, boys. It. Take care, guys. Take care. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. If you already saw that, obviously, we went up into the air. And what an experience that was, Peter. Where did we go? We uh, I was in the lead plane. David was in the middle, and our cameramen were in the back so they can get the formation shot. I think it was nine planes in total, yeah. which was awesome. So we started in Vernon, flew over Okanagan Lake, made a UE over the top of Okanagan Lake, over Swan Lake, down over Kalamalka Lake, over yeah. the highway, over Wood Lake. We went over the Kel Kelowna Airport, which is cool to get over it but not land. Got into Kelowna, went over the bridge in Kelowna, yep. started all back the way down up. the Okanagan, Okanagan, arm of Okanagan, came back, circled through Vernon. And then we landed, except for one except person. Except for one person, yeah. So uh, Chuck ended up uh, veering off with Mitchell, our cameraman extraordinaire, in the uh, in the jet there. So and you must have seen those shots, the barrel rolls? Yeah, that was Mitchell. He did some barrel rolls. He's Absolutely working hard phenomenal. for Hello Okanagan. 100%. Thank Anyways, you, guys. Thank you guys for watching so much, and have a wonderful day, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching.